the moment of truth. And yes. Now will it close when I let go? Fantastic. Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to our humble little scrapyard. In today's episode, we are going to be building up our final home. This will be the location we set up base and set up shop until the survival mode is indeed implemented. And as such, I would like this house to be very high tech. I don't want it to simply be a wooden structure in the middle of nowhere. Oh no no. I wish it to be a wooden structure with all sorts of weird electronics in the middle of nowhere. And that is today's goal, to test out the control block and the rotation editor so that we can make some form of sliding door. Now I know this is possible, but as I've always said and I always do in all of these types of games, I am purposefully not watching videos or reading guides or other stuff like that. I prefer to learn for myself. And as such, we're going to have a bit of a weird time learning this, but I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. So from what I've gathered from a little bit of testing off camera, you can essentially connect bearings to this lovely control block and then dictate how much it's going to rotate in a specific order. So if you have several of them, you could do like, I don't know, a door hopefully opening or perhaps lifting up, an elevator maybe, all things like that. And maybe even a really ver weird version of the ski lift, which I was talking about before. I'm really not too sure. I'm even considering scrapping this little thing at the back here, which currently is just a very flexible... What what do you call this? Cargo bay? Lift thing? I don't know what to call it. It's something... Trailer! There's the word. To scrap the trailer and make something which can come off of the top of the car and then land on the bottom. But first, we need to learn the basics. And that's where today is coming in. And as such, let's get started. So, I've only tested this out very briefly. And basically, what I noticed was, you do need a switch. There we go. So now we have a switch attached. It means when I turn this thing on, we can control how much this thing rotates. And that's fantastic. However, what I want to try out is adding other bearings to the bearings so that we can perhaps extend it almost like a leg and possibly push and pull things. If we can push and pull things, we could very easily make a door slide open and shut. How smooth this will look, I have no idea. And thus, today's testing will start. So, let's do this to, I don't know, what about minus 90 degrees, okay, so it should come upwards. We have successfully made our, our wood erect, okay, that's great, so put it back down and continue on. <clears throat> so now I've done that, how about adding two pieces of wood instead, so one there and then one, I don't know, here. Well, we haven't connected it yet. That's a big problem there. Aha! Now everything's functioning. So, once again, we click to use. If I... Ah! Let me hold something small. There we go. So, this one, if this one does minus 90 as well. Ooh, how about if we do minus 190? Okay. Bear with me here. So, this is number two, and I want it to be done at the same time. Now that should fold into this one, shouldn't it? No. Why wouldn't... Wait, I thought minus 180 would put it facing here. Oh! It's... Oh, okay, I get it. It's controlled with this. Okay, okay, okay. So it would be minus 90. You see, I thought it was an absolute rotation. So as that went up, I assumed that this would then rotate with it anyway. So 180 would still be down. That's not the cat. Oh. Or maybe I did this and didn't see. How on earth did I do that? That's really, really weird. Okay. Oh, I must not have clicked off. Okay, try again. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, so it does work like that. Actually, I think we just made like a platform. We could use something like this as like a drawbridge. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but how are we going to push something with this? Well, for a start, we're going to want this to be down to start off with. So let's get rid of all this. 
all of that goes away. So start off with this being down instead. Okay. So now we want this to move plus 90, and that will push this outwards. Right? That makes sense, yes? Click. Oh. Minus 90. Okay. Oh, of course, yeah, clockwise. Okay, I know what I'm doing. I'm totally good at this kind of stuff. You can believe me. Click. Yes. So, using the theory we just did, what if we had another one? But this one we would want to be plus 90, wouldn't we? Because that goes that way, then want this one to go... Yeah, yeah, cause, yeah, because opposite, yes? Yes, okay. Um... Not quite, I admit, not quite what I was looking for there. Okay, yeah, so it does do what I said before. In terms of the... The turning will be different depending on where that one's moved. So it is an absolute, okay. And if we keep doing that, we should be able to bring it back. The problem is, that's not very stable, is it? Like, I want it to drag something back, that's fantastic and all, but let's say I wanted it to drag this. So this is our door. So there's our door. We want this door to move backwards. Well, actually, the door would be that way, but you get the idea. Okay, yeah. If we're going to do it, let's do it correctly. So, we want the door, this door here, perhaps, to move backwards on itself. It's going to be really difficult. Or at least sideways on, on itself, I should say. We want that to move over there. But if I do this... Yeah, that's nowhere near what I want it to look like. I mean, it's still pretty darn cool. You can still make the door vanish, but I want a smooth slide, so clearly that's not the case. If very cool looking in its own special way. So how do we make it look more stable? We're going to need a third... Oh, I know. We're going to need a third one which rotates with this so it always stays straight. So this should start off straight. Grr. Right, yeah, should start off straight. That wood goes here. So here's our door. Then we do something like that, yeah? Yeah, okay. So right now, this will just do what I did before. However... <laughs> that's amazing. So we want it to completely counteract the one before, if that's the case. Please work. No. That's not right at all. Because that's only 90. Oh, of course it's only 90 because of that one. Yep, 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 okay. Because that's already been countered by this, so this one is now countering only that. Which means, yes, we have a sliding door. Now the question is, could we hook this up elsewhere as well? So I don't know how the connections work. Could this connect? Yes, it could because of the flooring itself. Okay, the floor is acting as a connection. Okay, okay, okay. I get it, I get it. But I'm not even sure. Perhaps you can connect things to other buildings and other vehicles. I don't actually know. So, let's go into a fast forward segment and let's quickly put the door in. See, this is why I like this game. It's more intuitive. It's less difficult than a lot of games I've played recently, building-wise. So you can just kind of learn very quickly what to do just based off basic logic. Which is good for me, because basic logic is difficult. So we want the stand to be there. We'll probably make it out of something else, actually. So this is going to be the outside of the house, yes? So... Concrete seems fine, but metal. We're going to have a metal facility. That seems completely reasonable. So I do want the door. Yeah, yeah we want it in the corner. We want it around about here. 
However, that would mean we're a bit short on space over here. So let's just move it a little bit more just to be on the safe side. The switch will go here. So And the control block can go anywhere, can't it? So, uh, sure, it's going over here because I can. It's hiding on the side of the building at the back. Then we're going to rebuild what we just did, hopefully smaller, here and over here somewhere. And the result should be a sliding door both ways. Pretty much, we're making a Star Trek door. The door is now in place, and honestly, I am really proud of myself with this. It's a really simple contraption, but the fact it actually works is just lovely, and I think that's what I love most about this game. There is a satisfaction with getting anything to work. Now, I would like to thank everyone who suggested about the sliding door, and a lot of people did talk about how these interact with things, so that helped me out a lot. So thank you very much, everyone in the comments, who has been leaving a lot of helpful hints really really helpful now the one thing I don't like about this which I do need to fix is the fact this is taking up so much space I'm going to lose this much of the flooring just because of the door system also I have no idea how I'm meant to close this now and I'm not I haven't tested that out yet so if I have another switch could I link that to the same controller I can okay no, I can't. No, I can't. Okay, that's a big problem then. So, how am I meant to turn this off when I'm inside? How do I close the door without actually having to go, you know, outside? And now I think about it, since people wanted me to use these a lot more, what about a sensor? Now, the one problem I can think of with a sensor is that sensors don't last very long. They, they're only active when you're standing in front of them, which means if I hook this up as the new switch, it will open when I get in front of it, however... Oh no! No, I'd have to reverse everything, I'd have to have the starting point closed. But either way, you don't have much time. So imagine I'm just standing in front of it now. It'd instantly close as soon as I left it. No, that won't really work. But yeah, you'd actually need to reverse that, so... I actually don't know how to do that. Could I build this, would I have to actually rebuild it so that it's closed by default and have the mechanism in reverse? Or, what about these here? Well, we're about to learn something. We are about to learn what on earth they actually mean. And we have a new controller here. And attach them both together. There we are. So, my theory is this is a standing point before you actually do things. So, what about if I leave this at minus 60? Oh, and then this becomes plus 60. 
we use a switch. Um, just because I'm lazy, we'll use the switch I've already installed. I fully destroyed the switch. Darn it! Final. I'll, I'll find the switch again. That took at least five seconds. That was horrible. Now we turn on the switch. What a switch! Yeah, that. Okay, yeah. So what I could do then is have all of these on standby on the position they're already in. So minus. 90, 190, etc., and, th and then reverse these. That way it could be open and closed like that. Well, I'll quickly do that, and let's see how that works. I don't think it will be very good, but we could get it to work like that. Actually, now I'm thinking about it. Now I am thinking about it. What about a button? A button would do the same thing as a sensor, but you don't have to be in front of the sensor. Um, maybe if I should connect it first, it might be a little bit beneficial. Work! Let go. And then if I slow down this, which I haven't tried out before, so you could open it, then you'd have quite a bit of time for it to close. It would take quite a while to close. Yes, that's how I'm doing it. That's how I'm doing it with the button rather than the sensor. That makes way more sense to me. So... <laughs> we're going to need to do okay, let's reverse these first. So plus 90, minus 180. Okay, so now the door is closed by default. If I hold down the button... Again, I would like to thank everyone who left, who left suggestions. I feel like this would have took a lot longer without those. I may not be reading guides or watching videos, but suggestions are always good because they just give me hints and ideas. Hmm. One small problem. Why is that latching somewhat? When that fully opens there, it hits the side. And yes, I'm aware these things aren't symmetrical. It doesn't really matter. It's just about what actually shows there. I put this one a little bit too far back because I miscounted during the build segment. Why is that? What have I done? Have I done any of these wrong? Oh, that's what I've done wrong. Okay. Which means it's going back further than it has to. So let's do that again. Hold down the button and... And I go in, and it closes. Now, we still have the issue of the fact we can't open the door from the inside right now, because we can't attach another button, apparently. You'd think you could attach two buttons. I mean, why can't you attach two buttons to this? What's the big problem? Unless, can you attach bearings to two controllers? If so, we could just copy that over to this one. No, we can't. Well, that's annoying. We'd need a button we could access from both sides, which isn't going to happen, honestly. Also, having this like this doesn't help as well, because I don't know how I'm going to actually hide this inside the building. There we are then, the full mechanism for the opening door. It's just a matter of I have no idea how to control this on the other side. I just don't. We need to have multiple switches and stuff connected and I don't know how to do that. So maybe I will actually have to look up guides and stuff. I don't know, but for now, this is where we're leaving it. I am really happy with this and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel and, most importantly, shows that Scrap Mechanic is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And yes, you just watched a video of me building a door. Thank you and goodbye.